This episode is powered by Safety FM. Welcome to Safety Talks, a podcast about all things safety, as defined by you, with your host, Steve Sisson, on Safety FM. All right, welcome everyone to Safety Talks. I am your host, Steve Sisson, and today's guest is Danny Goff with Driver Reach. Um, I'm very excited to talk to Danny today. Um, He's tackling an issue in the trucking industry and transportation industry that everybody is running into. So, Danny, welcome to the show. Thank you, Steve. It's a pleasure being here. So, Danny, you guys are tackling a very tough issue that's going on with the transportation industry. Can you uh, give me a little bit of an idea what you guys are doing? Yeah, so I I think uh, unless you're in denial, there's a big issue facing this industry right now, and that is the driver shortage. Um, I think there's going to be over 200,000 jobs uh, or empty trucks, potentially, by 2022, I believe. Um, it's well above 70,000 right now. And um, we've got to figure out ways to uh, improve the hiring process, the recruiting process, and that's where our company comes in. Um, so what we're able to do is make that hiring process really easy. And the way we do that is we meet drivers where they are. Um, so just like I imagine yourself, Steve, you probably have a smartphone. Is that right? That is correct. Uh, is it an iPhone? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, I'm an Android guy, but hey, you know, everybody's got a smartphone these days. And if a, a driver you know, between routes, if they're at a rest stop, you know, is, on, is on that phone, we want to be able to meet them where they are. And so that's through a, a mobile application, which is not necessarily revolutionary, but on the back end, some of the things that we're doing, I would consider is new. And it's a lot more modern than what's currently out there. So you've got that driver. They might be looking for different jobs on, on different uh, lead sites. They want to be able to log in through their social media, through Google, through Facebook, fill out some key information, um, name, address, social. Uh, if it's an iPhone, that's an autofill function that can be done in less than 20 seconds. And then that allows that key information to be captured within the system, and the recruiters can do their job. So if it's at 3 a.m., can see that in the system. They can build out um, certain commands and different marketing campaigns. You know, obviously you're not going to call someone at 3 a.m. So through the power of text messaging, they can at least send them, you know, a little text based on the messaging that their company and their marketing wants, and then that driver um, can continue that application, or they can contact them at a later time if that makes sense. It does. It does. Now, on this on this technology here, um, a lot of trucking companies are still using old formats where it's, you know, go to my website and apply or mm-hmm. um, come in and fill out a paper application. And, and this, yep. like it, it kind of takes over on that part. Absolutely. I think it was like my second day uh, on the job. I just to give you a little back, a bit of background about myself, I've I've been with Driver Reach for six months. We've been around for a few years now, but I've really um, started going to market and, and been in hyper growth for the last year. Um, so on my second day of the job, I, I had someone ask me if I could fax them the information. And, and that kind of tells you um, where this industry is to an extent. So, you know, we're, it's 2019 and, and we're having someone ask me to fax them information. Um, and so if, you, if you're asking a driver um, who's on the road all day, who might be at a rest stop at night um, to get, you know, download a PDF, fill out that PDF, scan that PDF back in or fax that, then you're, you're already hurting yourself. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'll be honest with you. I, I wouldn't know where to find a fax machine right now. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, driver reach um, is solving the problem with technology, and that's by going to the driver, which is a fantastic idea. Um, how does it handle um, kind of post hire things such as uh, driver qualification files? Mm-hmm. That's great. That's a great question. So the whole idea is to allow technology to work for you. Um, so things like automatic employment verifications. 
DQ files, your MVRs, PSPs, all of that, uh, as well as some of the compliance pieces, all of that can be under one roof in the platform. So you can, with the click of a button, print that out if you need to. You can send that if you need to. So really, with an, there's an emphasis within our system to reduce that time to hire. Uh, for some companies, that's several weeks, and we work with them to try to reduce that to a couple of days. Well, does, that, does that answer your question at all? Absolutely. And, I, and I'll tell you, you know, any, any company that's still taking a couple of weeks to hire someone is missing out on that driver because everybody else is, is trying to find drivers as well. So the, the, Absolutely. Shorter, the, the shorter amount of time you get from, you know, your first contact to the day they start, the better. You're exactly right. So it sounds like you guys partner with a lot of companies already. I've been checking out your website at uh, driverreach.com and uh, mm-hmm. you've got a lot of uh, companies you're already partnering with. Yeah, we try to be as open as we can be um, and integrate with as many um, they could be considered partners, um, strategic partners, or um, just people in general that we want to work with. We are trying to make this this entire process as frictionless as possible. So from a, a safety standpoint, from a background check standpoint, um, we, we are um, pretty open to strategic partners that make sense for our, our company. Great. So uh, with, with uh, Drivers of Reach, you also, um, you have a couple different uh, solutions here. You have one in the technology and then mm-hmm. you have, do you have one that's more on, um, I guess, ongoing maintenance of files and stuff like that? Yeah. Are you referring to uh, the VOE plus? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So that's that uh, verification of employment. Uh, that's a, that's a, uh, a separate service of ours that we'll have some big announcements coming out this year. We, we can't talk too much about that. But again, the whole idea is just to make that hiring process as seamless as possible. So um, rather than reaching out, calling someone, waiting on a fax, waiting on an email, um, we, we are working to address that head on through an aggregate uh, database. Nice. So let, let's take a break down the process here just a little bit. So if I'm a driver, I'm Mm -hmm. looking for a job, I see something that's posted and the company's using driver reach. So I I apply for this position or I at least send something out saying I'm interested. Now driver reach would step in at that point and then contact me back saying, this is what we need to get you going. Yeah, that's a a great question. So we, we work, uh, we complement the company's recruiting and marketing efforts. So we're not necessarily taking over any of those efforts. Um, Simply simply by implementing our uh, mobile friendly DOT application within the platform, their website. Um, So a driver would, you know, find out about this company, get on their website, and then that routes them through our software. Uh, But, but it never leaves their, uh, their brand, their site. And that can be done through applying directly on the website. And that can also be done on any of the uh, marketing and job listing channels that they are uh, utilizing. So we have what is called a a smart link, which is a dynamic link that tracks exactly when, where, and how a driver is applying. So that could be on Indeed, Craigslist, Facebook, and so on. Very nice. Very nice. And, and as we're talking, I'm, I'm scanning over your website and there's a lot of good yeah. information on it. Mm-hmm. Um, really kind of walks you through the process of, uh, of everything that uh, you guys do for the companies. And it does seem like, you know, if you're, if you're making an app available and, you know, uh, routing all of the proper information to the MVR companies who are going to pull them for you to, mm-hmm. Um, anything for background checks, it, it just takes away another step of, you know, I've seen companies where you fill out your application, then you got to come in to sign an authorization form for a background check. And then that's an extra day. Right. And it just keeps going on. Right. And, and it's so competitive right now. You're, you're losing out on a lot of times qualified applicants by adding extra hurdles and steps in the process. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I had, uh, with the with the last uh, company I was with, um, we had turnover at some some operating centers at eighty percent, 
even 90%. It was, mm-hmm. it was crazy. We couldn't yeah. keep drivers in the door. Right. Yeah. There was a, uh, I think it was fortune magazine came out with an article the other day on the driver shortage, talking a little bit about Walmart and they had some, uh, some absolutely crazy statistics that they, uh, had done some research on. And one of them was there is an industry turnover rate of 94%, wow. which I, I, I couldn't even believe. I had no idea. Um, so, I mean, these, these, these drivers and, and the companies oftentimes fault the drivers for hopping around, but ultimately I think that lies within their company and, and what they're doing to retain them as well. So, I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily blame a driver if, if they can living somewhere else and, you know, provide for their family and, you know, if, if it makes sense, then, then why not? Well, you um, know, so, you know, absolutely. go ahead. Yeah, I just uh, read an article on Walmart as well saying that they're uh, starting to kick up their wages where it, it could easily reach $90,000 a year. So when, when you got wages that high for a driver, uh, you can't blame them for wanting to jump over there. I mean, Walmart paying that kind no. of wage is never going to have a shortage. I mean, they'll have turnover, but they won't have a shortage because everyone right. wants in their door. Right. And if you can treat them well, provide them some amenities, you know, some uh – there's some interesting things going on in the industry in terms of different um, points program with uh, your, your various rest stops. And if, if Walmart can you know, work to provide them a little bit extra and, and go beyond what some of the other companies are doing, then I think they'll be more likely to stay. Yeah, Walmart's kind of always stayed at that uh, kind of the pinnacle of where drivers wanted to go. And you know, when you see something like um, them raising the rates, or I should say the the wages, the hourly wages or the mileage um, for drivers like that, it tells you something very important about the industry. They never had to do that before. Now they're having to, which is saying that, you know, just mm-hmm. the work short, the, the force is becoming shorter. So you got to pay more to keep people. I mean, that's mm-hmm. the bottom line. Yeah. And, and on that point, I think, you know, we're the, the workforce, the the demand is there. The supply is not. Um, and, and another uh, key issue, I, I don't know if I want to call it an issue, but just, uh, you know, something to be aware of is the average wage or the average age of the driver. Uh, I think the average age is around 51 years old for a driver. Yeah. And, it, and how, how do we start to get the younger generation into the industry? That, that's a that's a challenge. And, yeah. Right. And you can probably talk a little bit more about that on the safety side. Uh, but uh, there's, you know, some regulation going on okay. to allow 18 year olds to be able to enter the workforce. Uh, are you familiar with that? Yes. Yeah. There 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 are some states that do allow it now. Um, you can be uh, 18 years old, drive a tractor trailer, but you got to only do it interstate intra or sorry, intrastate. Mm-hmm. Interstate doesn't allow it right. to be 21 years old at this point. Right. Yeah. So that'll be interesting to see where that goes. Um, as far as, you know, what, what you're seeing in the industry from a safety standpoint, you know, we've got the you know, autonomous vehicles coming out, um, the EMD mandate over the last year. What would you say are, are the next big changes that are going to be happening? Um, I, I really think it's going to be um, autonomous. I, I think I think that's the direction yeah. everyone's going. I don't think it's right around the corner as, as people had uh, mm-hmm. had really liked it to be um, because there's so many regulations that need to be discussed. There's so many safety items that, you know, you're going to have an autonomous vehicle out there, 80,000 plus pounds driving down the road with no driver. I, I think the first step we're going to see is we're going to okay. see a co-driver, somebody who's there in an emergency right. situation. Absolutely. Almost as a, a pilot in a cockpit. Automation is only going to improve transportation it's not going to necessarily take job away and in my opinion the skill set required of that of a pilot you know the, the wage wages should increase you know you've, you've got more responsibility if that um if that truck if something goes wrong if there's a technology issue they've got to be trained and be able to you know jump in it and, and understand those systems. So I would think that the wages should increase over time. 
Yeah, I would think so too. And, and another um, problem that I think we'll have in the industry if we do go autonomous um, is I think our fatigue rates are going to go even higher. Um, yeah. Drivers, you know, going over the road six hours at a time and not actively engaged. I mean, we have a hard enough time mm-hmm. now with people falling asleep driving tractor trailers. I mean, imagine right. if they're not actively engaged. Right. Yeah, that that will be – and some of the monitoring uh, things that are going on as well can, can help with that. Uh, I, that's not necessarily my specialty, but I, I know I've, I have talked to – I talked to on average a good 30 recruiting managers a day and, and talk to them about some of the things that they're implementing from a technology standpoint. That was one that was brought up the other day was the in-cab monitoring systems. Yeah, there's uh, there's quite a few companies out there that do. I mean, it's getting very uh, interesting on what kind of technologies out there. Now they're getting, uh, oh, I forget what they call it, where they can actually uh, monitor your retinas um, as you're driving. And the way, oh, your wow. face, the way your face is positioned and how often you look around to see if you're showing signs of fatigue. And then you got your typical mm-hmm. import recording, like your drive cams and your smart drives out there, um, you know, that – are starting to their technology is increasing even more and being able to mm-hmm. find, uh, you know, fatigue events based on the vehicle movement. Uh, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool what's coming out in the future. Um, so it, there's, there's a lot of good stuff. Yeah, I think so too. And I think just like any technology that's out there, um, it, it won't be implemented until the masses agree until the government agrees and, um, so I would say we're still five to 10 out. Uh, I think the technology exists today on, as far as self-driving, I think there's been some, uh, case studies where that that's been successful, but until everyone can accept it, it's going to be a while. Agreed. Yeah. When, especially when you get to the, uh, like you said, the regulation and you know how quickly regulation works in the U S <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> awesome. Well, okay. you know, uh, yeah. drivers, re- driver, driver reach seems like it has a mm-hmm. a very good position in industry right now, and, and I think it's really needed. And it sounds like you, I mean, you guys said you've been around for a couple of years, and and your business is continuously growing. Yeah, and just to give you a little bit more background, real quick, um, the, the software has been in development for quite some time. So while our, you know we may have only gone to market over the last couple of years, uh, originally this software was developed um, within another company. And I'm not sure if I'm able to speak on that too much, but this was developed in-house at a transportation-specific recruiting company um, for several years. And then it, uh, we, we were able to spin off and focus um, strictly on the software side. So it's not like this, you know, this is more than just you know, a year or two old. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, Danny, I, I'm really excited to see something like this because, um, and especially talk about it because companies out there need this kind of technology. They, they need to speed up the process. They need to help drivers out, get them the best income, get them the best jobs. Um, and, and this, and this. Will yeah. Work. Right. Well, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. We're, we're pretty passionate about what we're doing here. We've got a great, a great team and we're growing every day um, with really industry experts. I'm kind of the, the newcomer here, but within our, within our entire company, we probably got over 50 years of transportation focused recruiting uh, experience. So I'm learning stuff every day. Um, the technology stuff is really fun to me um, and just, I'm excited to see where this goes and how we grow. Yeah, I, I am too, actually. Um, anything that uh, anything that we haven't touched on so far that, that you'd like to uh, discuss a little further? Well, yeah, I was just looking a little bit into um, your story and, and, and learning a little bit more about you. How did you get into this? What, when did safety um, become such a, a big issue for you? You know, it, you, you'll hear this time and time again. Um, I got into safety by accident. And, and literally, that's how many people do. <laughs> you know, I, I started out mm-hmm. uh, I started out in operations. And sometimes with, when you're with smaller companies, you wear multiple hats. So safety was under my purview. 
and then kind of moved from there. And then my next job was safety. And then they gave me operations. And then I went directly to safety. Um, and I've been doing uh, safety in, in one aspect or another for over 20 years. And I've, I've kind of grown with the wow. business and, and continue to educate myself on what's going on and in, in the industry. And, you know, I've stayed primarily in transportation, but, you know, safety is generally universal. So, you know, unless you get into some really specialty items, um, it's just been something that's, that's been very fun and I'm passionate about. And I, I really like, uh, you know, people say, you know, a lot of safety people will say, we just want you to go home the same way you came to work. And, and really, that's what it comes mm-hmm. down to. I want to make sure people are safe and they go home. Right. And we're, we're doing what we need to do as a business. But at the same time, you get to go home and see your family every day. Right. That's a great mission. I love that. Well, you know, I, I, I and then, like what I do and, and I'm passionate about it. So honestly, I, I don't feel like I work. I feel like I yeah. just do what I like. It's they always say, find something you love to do and it's not a job. Well, that's yeah. kind of where I'm at. That's great. Yeah, that's, that's the goal. And, and looking through um, some of your, your website and I downloaded the app the other day. I mean, it looks like you're doing a tremendous job on here. So I just wanted to compliment you on that with the, I listened to a couple of your podcasts. Um, it's great to see that. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, anything else on driver's reach, Danny? Um, I think that's pretty good. We'll have some big announcements coming out. Um, uh, would love for anyone listening, following, Check us out. Check our website out. We put a ton of content out there through eBooks, through webinars, and that's not self-focused. So I, I think there's a lot of companies out there that they'll say, hey, come check out our webinar, and then it's an hour-long infomercial. We're not promoting our stuff. We're, we're focused on helping the industry as a whole. So we work with you know transport topics. We work with safety advisors, with um, recruiting companies, carriers, um, really with the, the goal to, uh, again, as, as I brought up earlier, we're, we're addressing this, this driver shortage head on, and we're working with partners, with drivers, um, to help. That's great. You know, it's, it's always, it's always nice to hear a company that their sole mission isn't on themselves. It's really on industry and really trying to help. So that's great. Um, so where, where can they, where, where can they find uh, driver reach if they wanted to get more information? Yeah, everything's uh, available on our site. So driver reach, that's two Um And if you go under resources, there is a ton of stuff on there, blogs, eBooks, webinars, case studies, um, all that's available. And, uh, yeah, please check it out. Feel free to reach out to any of us. To, um, I think there may be an opportunity. I'd love to get um, someone else back on your show that I'd like to talk to you about um, that, that's that been strictly in recruiting for almost 20 years now. I think she'd be a great resource as well. And her name is uh, Renee Williams. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely send the information over and uh, we'll, give her, uh, we'll give her a call. We'll talk to her. Great. Awesome. Well, yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, Danny, I appreciate you coming on. I was really excited about hearing what you guys had to had to (laughs) offer, because I know this is such a such a a pain point for transportation companies. Yeah, and I think we'll get there. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Excellent. Well, Danny, thank you very much for being on the show. Um, And thank you all for listening. This has been Safety Talks. I'm your host, Steve Sisson. Please join us next time when we talk all things safety. Looking for more information on the host, services, or even more podcasts, go to to safetyfm.com. Keep in mind, we now have an app out there. You can download the Safety FM app on the Apple Store or Google Play. Until next time, stay safe, my friends. 
The views and opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the host and its guest and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of the company. Examples of analysis discussed within this podcast are only examples. They should not be utilized in the real world as the only solution available as they are based only on very limited and dated open source information. Assumptions made within this analysis are not reflective of the position of the company. No part of this podcast may be reproduced, stored in a retrieval system, or transmitted in any any form or by any means, mechanical, electronic, recording, or otherwise, without prior written permission of the creator of the podcast, Jay Allen. Safety FM. This episode has been powered by Safety FM.